Hey folks, uh, my name's Dale Davidson. It's a great day to have a great day and I hope you're having a great day. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, hey, do us a favor, hit that like and subscription button and that notification bell. That really helps us out a lot. Hey, and share the channel with your friends and family because we're here to help. Uh, you know, our, our mission is to make differences in people's lives. So we're, we're we're striving to do that every day. We hope we're making a, a difference in your life today because you're watching this video. So if you want to hear about a certain topic, uh, leave me a comment below, uh, send me an email to dearvaguy at gmail.com. So the top, you know, we've talked a lot about presumptive conditions, presumptive conditions as it relates to burn pits, presumptive conditions as it relates to Agent Orange exposure and all that. So. Our topic today is presumptive conditions when exposed to asbestos. And what that means is that if you are exposed to asbestos and if you have these certain conditions, then you don't have to prove that with the VA. So it's presumed that your exposure to asbestos caused this condition or your, your cancers, whatever it may be. And we're going to talk about that. So if you worked in certain military jobs, you may have had contact with asbestos. So these are toxic fibers used in buildings. They had uh, asbestos shingles. They had all kinds of different products. They had, they wrapped asbestos on the pipes on ships and boilers and things of that nature, uh, using it as, a, as kind of an insulator. And if you, inhaled those fibers they caused you some considerable harm so again asbestos they don't use it anymore okay but you'll see it out there if you served in iraq or other countries in the middle east southeast asia you may have had contact with asbestos in old buildings when they got damaged uh, releasing these toxic chemicals into the air or you may have had contact with asbestos if you worked in certain jobs or settings like again shipyards construction and vehicle repair I had a client whose husband they were repairing or renovating uh, military housing and uh, taking the asbestos shingles off of course they didn't i don't uh, know if they knew the hazards back then but uh, breaking up those shingles released those fibers and he actually uh, contracted asbestosis, uh, lung disease, and uh, eventually passed from that, unfortunately. So if you have been exposed to asbestos, okay, you may be eligible for VA benefits. Now, there are certain illnesses that are believed to be caused by contact, okay? And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So again, if you had contact with asbestos while serving in the military and you didn't receive a dishonorable discharge, then you may be, you may be eligible. Here's some of the jobs in the army you, you may have been exposed. Okay. Carpentry, construction, demolition, insulating, milling, mining, and vehicle maintenance. Ships, uh, the Marines, when they were on ships, uh, planes, armored vehicles, housing, there's a list on the internet, you can Google it, of about 45 or so Navy ships that had uh, asbestos on, on them in some way, shape, form, or fashion, wrapping around pipes, boilers, whatever it may be. So Air Force planes, again, it was used as an insulator. The asbestos in itself is not harmful unless you disturb it and then it releases these fibers and, and that's where uh, that's where the harm comes in the fibers. So if you've been exposed or you suspect that you've been exposed, and like I say, if you're in the Navy, you can go on the uh, internet and find your ship and say, hey, I was on that ship. So I suspect I've been exposed, okay? So if you have been or, or suspect that you've been exposed to the fibers through the environment or at home via family contact, you know, talk to your doctor, 
about your exposure history and whether you have any symptoms of asbestos exposure. The symptoms may not become apparent for many decades after your exposure, but it's important to check with your doctor if any of the following symptoms develop, okay? If you have shortness of breath, wheezing, hoarseness, persistent cough that gets worse over time, if you have blood in your in your spit, okay? You cough up blood from your lungs. Uh, you have pain or tightening in your chest, difficulty swallowing, swelling of your neck uh, or face. You have a loss of appetite. Boy, I wish I had a loss of appetite. Weight loss and or fatigue and edema. Anemia. Wow. So if you have any of those, go to your doctor immediately, okay? And then tell your doctor that, hey, I was in the military and this is what I did and I suspect I was exposed or I know I was exposed because of A, B, C, and D. And then put it in your medical records, okay? We need to see that as we're helping you uh, with these claims, okay? So there's basically four common asbestos illnesses, pleural disease, okay? It's non-cancerous, but it's a, a, a thickening of your lungs that where the uh, difficulty breathing and things of that comes in. So pleural plaques are small areas of scarring. They get thick over the, over the years, and they're usually about the size of a coin, maybe a dime, or so, and can uh, be present on both lungs, one lung, doesn't matter. They become hard and more calcified over time. They don't cause any symptoms, but are an indicator of asbestos exposure. So pleural thickening is a very serious condition. The patches are more widespread, and both layers of the pleurus can be involved. The lungs can be restricted by pleural thickening. Again, that's where you have difficulty breathing. And so that makes your lungs not be able to expand properly, which you can't catch your breath. And there's a lot of different problems with not being able to breathe, okay? Uh, and a lot of health problems by not being able to breathe properly, okay? There's mesothelioma. Mesothelioma? You've heard it on the, on the news, okay? So that's a cancer of the lining of the lungs, or more rarely the lining of the abdomen, okay? So in virtually all cases are believed to be caused by exposure to asbestos. So if you were exposed to asbestos and you have mesothelioma, see, look, I pronounced it right, okay? Let's get you to the doctor, tell him about your exposure, and get it documented so we can get you the benefits. So historically, mesothelioma treatments were limited to uh, therapies, but there are medical uh, technologies, you know, come a long way, and so there's, there's better therapies now that have a better, a more positive impact on your symptoms and your survival. Of course, there's asbestosis, uh, that's a type of pulmonary lung scarring of the lungs caused by inhaling those fibers, those asbestos fibers or dust. And again, you inhale that. Of course, if you're like my client, he was tearing down a or uh, renovating military housing and tearing off those asbestos shingles. So he was breathing in the fibers and the dust while he was doing that. So asbestosis is generally a benign, non-cancerous condition, okay? That's uh, your reaction to the asbestos fibers and that causes damage to your, your air sacs. And your air sacs are very, very fragile, okay? So it makes it more difficult for you to get oxygen uh, to get into your bloodstream, uh, which again, that's shortness of breath and that. So unfortunately, the lung damage caused by asbestos cannot be reversed and will continue to progress. So asbestosis can increase your risk of getting lung cancer. All right, 
last one of the four, lung cancer. So in most cases, lung cancer is caused by smoking. Okay, I've had people get lung cancer not by smoking, but in secondhand smoke. So it just all depends on the individual. But so it's advisable to stop. However, more than 10% of the people with lung cancer have never smoked. Okay, so they're looking at that 10% saying, well, were you exposed to any asbestos? The answer is yes. So if you were exposed to asbestos, but you're not a smoker, yes, you can get lung cancer. So uh, look, asbestos, like Agent Orange or anything, is devastating on your body. It's hard to treat, but it can be treated for the most part. Again, our, our goal is to make difference in people's lives. We hope that this uh, video has been informative. We hope you have learned something. Thank you for tuning in today. If you like what we're doing, if you learn something, that's great. Okay, please hit that like and subscribe button and get that uh, hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so you'll be notified when we have another uh, video come out, which we have videos coming out every couple of weeks. So if you need help with your DIC claim or your uh, appeal, let us know. Glad, glad to help you out. If you have any topics that you want to hear about, Leave me a comment below or send me an email at dearvaguy at gmail.com, dearvaguy at gmail.com. Again, let your friends and family know about this. Let your buddies know about this because, again, we want to make a difference in people's lives. So until next time, hold your head up. Be proud. Uh, we're living in the greatest country in the world. We want you to go out, be confident, and go out there and make a difference in somebody's life today. Until next time, be blessed. Stop.